Right, so hi, I'm Matt, and uh, I'm here with Andy, who's one of our amazing animal keepers here at Paynton Zoo. And uh, we've come to see our Komodo dragon today. So, uh, Andy, who have we got right here? Well, you can see Khaleesi, very excited about the prospect of getting fed. Khaleesi is a Komodo dragon. She came to us from Barcelona Zoo. She's been at the zoo now for two years, about to turn eight years old. So she was six when she came to us. She's um, pretty much fully grown. Females are much smaller than the males. The males are the big 10 foot long, slash three meter long giants that everybody sees on the TV. Right, so if, if we're talking about Khaleesi and she's, she's on her own, she's yep. in quite a big enclosure, yep. but she's on her own. Is that an, an issue, Komodo? No, they are pretty much solitary in, in the wild. They'll come together to feed off of the carcasses and stuff, but they like, they like to keep their distances. Smaller Komodos will stay away from big Komodos because there is a potentially potential to get eaten right, by a okay. bigger Komodo. Right, get eaten. This used to be um, a snake exhibit. It um, was one of the first open, open top snake exhibits, I think, in the country. Obviously, with the potential to get a dragon, it was something that, we've, that the zoo has been after for, for, for years. And this seemed like a good opportunity. We've moved the snakes elsewhere in the zoo. It had to be slightly rejigged, a bit more to suit the dragon, so she can climb up stuff. And she's got, um, you know, logs to climb up and different basking zones. She's got a whole bank of UV and heaters underneath the walkway here that she sits down on this step down here and basks all in the morning or after a feed she likes to sit down there. Well I think if people have seen Komodos on TV you normally see them just like, prowling through like, maybe dry scrub for forest or something like that. You don't think of them uh, like a big animal like Khaleesi like climbing up so she's yeah. quite, quite good at climbing. I mean uh, they spend their early years pretty much arboreal as right, babies okay, so, so they're obviously true. as baby Komodo dragons they're, they're trying, basically trying to stay out of the way of adult Komodo dragons because like I said they're, before they, they will get eaten. One of the ideas behind the the, the bank and the, the, the river bank style sort of enclosure was to try and mitigate some of the problems that um, Komodos tr traditionally have in captivity, which is issues with their um, with their legs, just just sort of general fitness as, a, as an okay. adult. Because they, so we're they trying to keep them moving. So like when we were kids, then everybody talked about yeah, uh, yeah, Komodo back, dragons yeah. having a lethal bite because their mouth was full, full of, of these bacteria like you know, septicemia causing bacteria. But you're saying that's not no, not no. In recent years, they've actually discovered that. Um, Komodo dragons are venomous. Okay. They produce their saliva glands, which are basically a venom gland is a modified saliva gland. Right. So they're producing a toxic saliva. Um, and since then as well, they've done studies into other, other monitor lizards and found that there are other species of monitor lizards with venom glands and that produce venomous saliva. And they come from Komodo and some of the islands nearby. Yep. So we've got a lot of animals here at the zoo that come from islands. Yep. But why so? Why, how can we get... Most island species are, are endemic to that island. Um, the isolated islands um, mean things have evolved differently or separately yeah. from other, you know, other species and stuff. So, uh, hence why we have such a big lizard. You know, you don't find a lizard this big on a continent anywhere yeah. on a mainland continent because they would have been um, outcompeted for food by probably by mammals. Yeah. Most things are. Yeah, or well, probably um, by mammals. Because there's no large yeah. mammals on Komodo or Flores or any other islands. They they have you know managed to stay this big and. Fill that niche, really. Okay. Fill that niche of you know a large predator. Yeah. And we mentioned about her maybe being able to hear your voice, and you were talking about her bit, bit responding to training yeah. and to a whistle. So oh, okay, does yeah. that help? I didn't think of a lizard as being able to be trained. They it? are, um, you know, they're regarded as intelligent animals. A lot of the monitor species are. They, they, they respond very well to training. We have other other smaller monitor species that we've even target trained and station trained. And in the two years that we've had Khaleesi, we've, we've, she's pretty much target trained. We, can, we have a long target on a pole that we can move to other, you know, anywhere in the enclosure and she'll, she'll move to that target, which is, okay. which is useful, it will be useful in the future when we can, you know, get into a crate and things like that, you know, it's, it's much easier. It's, again, it's the same with the crocodiles, you know, it's much easier to train them to get into a crate than it is to try and sort of manhandle them right, into a yeah. crate. It's, okay. it's safer for us, safer for them. And the last thing we want to do is, you know, stress her out or injure her or her injure us, trying to, you know, move her somewhere else, you know, out the enclosure for whatever reason. It was a couple of goes, literally two, like three or four goes. And right, she, so she's she cottoned on. Intelligent. Yeah, she's intelligent enough to know. And obviously she gets a reward when she goes in, that's the whole point. It's, it's all reward-based training. Well, brilliant. Thanks, Andy. Thanks a lot for your time. And uh, hopefully you can come and see Khaleesi here at Paynton Zoo sometime soon. Cheers.